Eucharist right too on this fifth Sunday of Easter, and then on page 355. Right. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Turn the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. A reading from Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? <laughs> then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is it? What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
The Psalter reading appointed for the fifth Sunday of Easter is Psalm 22, verses 24 through 30, which you'll find on page 612 of the Book of Common Prayer. Today, let's read these verses antiphonally, beginning with the lectern side, which will take the even verses, and the pulpit side, take the odd verses. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The Lord shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. Egypt belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Amen. reading from 1st John the fourth chapter beloved let us love one another because love is from God everyone who loves is born of God and knows God whoever does not love does not know God for God is love God's love was revealed among us in this way God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have found from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to pause our series on the Psalms because the lesson from Acts was just too good to pass up. It's a story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. You guys remember any of that from what we just read? How was the Ethiopian traveling? How was he getting around? By a chariot? Check out this chariot. Our children's homily props are getting fancier. This was designed by the firm Sroka Sroka and Father Joe. And here we have the Ethiopian eunuch traveling by chariot. Here's Philip. And the Spirit comes to Philip and tells him to go meet the Ethiopian. And how does he catch up to the Ethiopian? How fast do you think that chariot might have been going? Do you think you could run and chase a horse and catch up to it? Yeah. I think this, do you guys play sports? Everybody plays a sport. What is probably your coach's favorite thing to tell you when you're playing a sport? Whether it's soccer or baseball? Hustle. I think Phil, I imagine Philip hustling after this chariot. If he took his time or stopped to pick flowers, you think he would have caught up to the chariot? No, he probably wouldn't. He finally catches up to the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian's reading from the prophet Isaiah. And we read a lot of this during Holy Week. That the lamb before its shears is mute, so he opened not his mouth. And the Ethiopian was on his way to Jerusalem, but when he read Isaiah, he wasn't sure who was it about, who it was about. Was it about the prophet, or was it about someone to come? And what did Philip, how did he respond? Who 
didn't he say that the prophet Isaiah was talking about? You can use your favorite Sunday school answer for this question. If you don't know it, the answer to a question in Sunday school, what can you say? Jesus. You got a pretty good chance of being right. So Philip goes on to share with the Ethiopian all the good news about Jesus. Because Philip was there for Jesus' life and had been there with him through Holy Week and had seen his suffering and his death. And Jesus had reappeared to them when he was resurrected. And Philip shares with him the good news. He gets in the chariot with the Ethiopian and they ride along together and he shares the good news with him about Jesus. And what do they come upon? They're on a wilderness road. And they come to some water. And the Ethiopian looks at Philip and says, here's some water. What prevents me from being baptized? And what did the two of them do? Yeah, they got out of the chariot and went down to the water. And the Ethiopian got baptized and joined the family of God. What's your favorite part of this story? Oh, yeah, they didn't really think about the, the Ethiopian, maybe didn't consider the horse when he invited Philip to get in. And maybe they should have some more horsepower to pull two people. <laughs> what else about this story do you remember or do you like? Oh, yeah, they should have offered some of the water to the horse. That's good, too. Yeah. I am struck by how Philip was able to hear the Spirit tell him. I think sometimes in my own life I get distracted or have other things on my mind that if God had a megaphone and was trying to get my attention, I think sometimes I'd have a hard time hearing. Do you ever feel that way? No. No? I think that's the first thing he was able to do, was he was able to hear the Spirit, and the Spirit told him to go catch that chariot and go talk to that Ethiopian. And he hustled to get there because he had met Jesus, and Jesus was something so good. But you can't keep Jesus to yourself. You want to share it with all that you've got. So think about that this week. Think about listening and hearing, looking out for God's voice in your life so that when you hear God's voice, you can hustle and take off and find all those good things that God has for you. Amen. Bullets. Anybody like a children's bulletin? That covers our reading from Acts. I think in our other two lessons, there isn't any way to avoid considering this word abide because it's in the other two lessons. In the first letter of John, he writes that God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. He goes on, God is love and those who abide in love abide in God. God abides in them. And in today's gospel, Jesus also uses abide. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
Those who abide in me bear much fruit. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Now, all this reference to abide got me thinking about one of my favorite comedy movies, The Big Lebowski. I don't really recommend that any of you guys judge me on this if you go home and watch this um, later on this week. But in the final scene, the main character, Jeff Lebowski, otherwise known throughout the movie as The Dude, he approaches the bar at the bowling alley where him and his buddies hang out. And the film's narrator, who's known as The Stranger, is already seated at the bar and he turns to the dude and says, take it easy, dude. I know that you will. And the dude replies, yeah, well, the dude abides. Now, as it turns out, data from Merriam-Webster's online dictionary shows that people who are searching for the meaning of abide are either motivated by Jesus calling on his disciples to abide in me, or they're looking for what does this mean that the dude was saying when he was responding to the chaos of his world in his story when he said the dude abides. In both instances, abide means to remain. But consider how the message translation of the Bible puts it. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. Jesus is the source of our life and seeks to remain with us. But in the case of the big Lebowski, the dude is a laid-back, carefree stoner, and he perverts to, prefers to abide just to simply exist or remain rather than to change or be changed by his experiences. So this idea of abiding, remaining in Jesus is important if we're to remember that perfect love casts out fear, as John reminds us. What is perfect love? It's not really an emotion or a feeling because that type of love just doesn't abide, does it? Just ask anyone who's been a Christian for any amount of time. It's hard work, and the feelings of it aren't really always warm and positive. Love that is perfect is from God, and it's most excellently shown in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And this kind of love brings freedom and new creation. This is the love that the Ethiopian eunuch encountered in baptism. And in baptism, we too are washed, set free, and initiated into the church. So Philip became a conduit for God's love and abiding in the world by abiding with the eunuch. And we too are called and empowered by God to be a conduit for God's love. Remember when God created the world, God saw that it was good? And our lives should reflect this truth. God took delight in all that he made, so we too can delight in other people and in all of creation. Love has the power to cast out fear. So rather than seeking to control a person or a situation or be anxious toward them or anxious to our crumbling world as it falls to climate change and all kinds of things run rampant over it. Try doing the hard work of understanding another person, honoring the inherent worth in that individual. Sometimes we can fear the wrong things. Perhaps we should fear that we'll fall short of the enthusiasm and grace modeled for us by Christians in ages past. Consider Philip in our story today, how he was able to hear the Spirit. And then he ran to catch up to the chariot to share the good news about Jesus. We hear these stories on Sunday mornings of the heroes of our faith. We hear them as the word of the Lord. And we respond, thanks be to God. May these stories remain with us through the week to comfort us and strengthen us for our journey. Fear, on the other hand, though, it may have a good effect if it prompts us to return. 
Remember our song from this morning, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. We live in a world that God has made, but it's also a world that's reeling with the cost of those who have gone before us and did not love others in creation as they should. We cannot change the past, but we do have choices for ourselves today. We don't have to choose a way of life that is selfish, destructive, or extractive. So fear may have a positive benefit of leading us to embrace a turning of repentance back to God. But fear is still a hard thing to shake. There's a cost to making a different choice. And the cheapest choice isn't always the most faithful one. We've gotten comfortable with our lifestyles, and it's hard to cultivate an imagination where we can accept a little discomfort for a greater good. I once visited Haiti with a group from church. The church had a decades-long relationship with a small, remote village, which could only reach by foot. And there, the church supported a school of around 300 children. This church in America funded the building of the church, paid the expenses for the teachers' salaries, uniforms for all the students, as well as daily meals. And that, I think, is pretty close to perfect love. And I'm grateful to have witnessed it. Haiti, though, is a very complex place with its own internal strife, along with all the external pressures on it. It's a place that's a reminder to the rest of us of how our ways of living can have destructive effects in other places in the world. And throughout our visit, I was struck by the simplicity of the Haitian people, with seemingly little to no or material goods and comforts. They seem mostly content and a happy and faithful people. And as our trip was concluding, our leaders presented the local priest with a new iPad. And to me, that new iPad symbolized not only all that was wrong and destructive with our standard of living, but it also seemed to reinforce the long-held power dynamics between Haitians and the rest of the world. I wondered to myself, what would it look like for us to become more like our brothers and sisters in Haiti? How do we become more like Haitian Christians? The gift of this iPad seemed to represent a standard of living that is not only not achievable for every person in the world, but the actual pursuit of it is destructive to the earth and all the people who inhabit it. If the Haitians were in need in anything, were in need of anything from the church in, in America, it wasn't an iPad. It was perfect love. To love, fear must be cast out. So do not be afraid. Philip may have had his own fears pursuing a chariot on foot. He may have made excuses and had other things to do. But because he was a witness to Jesus fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah, and he had experienced the love of God for himself, Philip was able to love a stranger. Jesus' image of the vine and branches show us just how connected we are to Jesus. And we may fumble to describe this relationship of mystical communion with the God of the universe. The branches abide in the vine, and we draw all the nourishment we need for life from Jesus. Jesus tells his disciples, apart from me, you can do nothing. This can be a challenging word, especially, at least for me, I tend to look on myself as someone quite accomplished. I've done quite a bit apart from Jesus. Yet, if, you check, if I check myself against creation, that may be a helpful corrective to my self-made narrative. Creation comes into being and continues to be by the grace of God. God's grace made the world, and without it, there would be nothing. And that's the story we all get to participate in. 
The life of Christ the vine flows without ceasing and without fail to all of its branches, to all of you. God has given you everything you need for life and holiness. Everything you need to know the truth, to bear fruit, and to love others. So may we bear fruit depending on the life of Christ in us. Amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, and the earth, and the earth. All that they have seen and have seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God and God, God and God, God and God, true God and true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, who through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, who came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate, the virgin Mary, the endless saint man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for the rest of the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and half son. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're using Form 3 of the Prayer of the People today. And form 3 is on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may not bear to side. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their sins. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light of the day will shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And I invite you to pray with me for those names who are listed on our prayer list, which you'll find printed in your service bulletin. Today, we pray for J.D. E. Griffin, Sandy Marks, Jim Jeffries, Brenda Signor, Joy and Carly Curtoy, Shane Curtoy, Danny Thomas, Benny Whitted, Adrian, Michael Gould, Carl Rowe, Gail Storms, and also for Bishop Michael Curry, the Reverend Gabe Lamazares, Suzanne Simmons, and Doris Hayhern. And I invite your own intercessions or your thanksgivings today, either silently or aloud. May we pray for the people of Gaza, the people of 
people of Israel, the people who are protesting, bless them all and hope for a peaceful outcome. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turn to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. May God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We stand. My brothers and my sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also, Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. A couple notes on communion. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion in the Episcopal Church. Everyone is invited to come forward to the altar. If you don't wish to receive communion, simply cross your arms and I will offer you a blessing. We receive communion from the pulpit side first, moving from front to back, followed by the lectern side, front to back. I mess that up every week. And the pulpit side, front to back. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Thanksgiving on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as enemy members of your Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of your body. And you have given us the spirit of the world of peace and grant us strength and courage and love for one another. 
love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. You be seated for the parish announcements. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrews. I'm Father Joe Soroka, the vicar here. I'm so excited to be with you. Welcome to everyone this morning. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, I'd love to be introduced to you at the doors of the church after the service. Also after the service is our fellowship and coffee hour. I invite everyone down there for that. I think Jesse will have just a little bit more to say about what's going on during coffee hour in just a minute. Uh, looking even farther ahead on your schedules, uh, the Feast of Pentecost is May 19th. And um, instead of coffee hour, we're going to have a festive lunch and barbecue with hamburgers and hot dogs that day. So you'll want to be here that day. And then on Sunday, June 2nd, the outreach committee uh, will meet during coffee hour. So if you're interested in being part of the outreach group, uh, mark Jan June 2nd uh, for that. Are there any other announcements? Today is the day uh, we've been announcing for the past several Sundays, but today we are uh, going to be participating in our Give Up Your Silence postcard writing initiative um, that the diocese is encouraging. So I invite you to uh, kind of hang around after you've eaten and uh, write a postcard to your state elected uh, representative and or senator if you'd like. Um, I'll have a laptop downstairs so if you don't know who those people are uh, we can find out for you so you can address those cards personally again this is um, a chance for you to write uh, to our state representatives our state legislators um, to explain to them why there are some things that you feel strongly about some social issues that uh, you feel strongly about and perhaps maybe what the state can do to take uh, action to either ameliorate those or to end those completely. So I uh, will appreciate your uh, your participation in this. Again, if you don't know who your representatives are, let me know, we'll find out for you. I invite everyone to come for that. Our vestry members have prepared a two minute um, description of, of an issue that's important to them. Uh, so if nothing else, come and hear uh, what matters to our vestry members and what they'll be writing about. And this is a chance for us to think about how it is to be a Christian and to uh, be a Christian in our political uh, society. So please come for that. Please stand for your blessing and dismissal. God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> Thank you. 